Good evening. My name is Peter Momogos from Beyond the Enemy Gates Ministries and Belito Christian Center. Let me know if you're joining me tonight. We do a prayer nugget, the shield of faith. Hi, Nelius, welcome. Good to see you. Um, and we'll discuss what we're going to do this week with Jezebel. Hi, Rebecca, welcome from Australia. Um, key is prayer, um, intercession, okay? It's Ephesians 6 that we're going to speak about tonight. Um, and while the people are coming on, I'm going to chat a little bit. Um, we're going to pray for Chico Woodhouse tonight. Uh, she's been diagnosed with um, COVID. Okay, so we'll pray for her at the end. Uh, hi, Susan Adams from North Carolina. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, and hi, Michelle. Good to see you. I think also from the States. Hi, Brenda Els from, I think, Johannesburg. I'm not sure. Uh, used to be Belito. Um, but um, I've spoken about it before. Uh, the shield of faith quenching the fiery darts of the enemy. Hi, Robin. Welcome. Good to see you. And we'll share, but while the people are coming on, I'll just share a little bit. Hi, Amy. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, the enemy used to um, shoot a fiery dart, a hollow arrow that was filled with a kind of uh, combustible, combustible uh, fluid. Uh, and maybe a little bit of pitch that would cause it to burn and they would fire the arrows um, or shoot the arrows uh, against the enemy, the Roman soldiers, and they would quench the fiery darts of the enemy with um, the shield of faith. And that's a metaphor that the Apostle Paul is using here. So let's start tonight. Ephesians 6, I'll read it again, 13 to 18. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, not partially, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, uh, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints." So it's important for us to understand, I repeat, uh, that the metaphor that the Apostle Paul is using in this text is based on the armor of the battle dress of the first century Roman soldier. The armor consisted of seven pieces of weaponry. Uh, the number one, the loin belt. Number two, the breastplate. Number three, the shoes. Number four, the shield. Number five, the helmet. Number six, the sword. And number seven, the lance. So tonight we're going to discuss the shield of faith. So let me just scroll to the notes. The shield of faith. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Above all, this is an extremely important uh, piece of the weaponry, which is the shield. The phrase is not really describing the importance of the weaponry, which is the shield. The Greek word is epip, epip, asin, epipasin, 
E-P-R-P-A-S-R-N, epipason. The word describes position as opposed to importance. It means out front and covering all. Um, you hold the shield out front, covering all. And if they came under a tremendous pressure in terms of uh, the fiery darts of the enemy, which is arrows, they would lift the shield and cover their heads. And you could not penetrate the battalion uh, if that was the order. Uh, the battalion, you could not penetrate it from the top because of the shield that covered their heads. Uh, and we must always remember that every part of the uh, weaponry, except the loin belt, is a an defensive and an offensive uh, weapon. The loin belt is uh, actually the support for all the weaponry. Uh, it's not the idea of the importance, but rather uh, the idea of cover and position. You hold a shield out front covering all. The shield was large and an oblong shaped object that looked like a large door. The inner working of the shield was made of animal hide, leather, and if it dried out, it would get brittle, crack and break. And the Roman soldier would daily, he would have to anoint the shield, okay, so that it didn't dry out, get brittle and break. And they were extremely disciplined in uh, the, call it drills. Uh, I know many that have been in the military know that you call a basic uh, function or a basic move that you make a drill because you will repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Uh, and you kind of do it every single day. Like, in other words, uh, in the modern day weaponry, you had to clean your rifle every single day. Otherwise, there would be a chance that it wouldn't fire when you needed it to fire. So you needed to oil it, clean it, uh, and make sure that it was functioning on a daily basis. The same with the Roman soldier's shield. He would daily anoint his shield with oil to stop it from becoming useless. The symbolism here is that our faith can dry up upon us or on us unless it is uh, or it has fresh unction of the Holy Spirit every single day. And that's why it's not it's 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 important that we pray every day. We oil the shield of faith that we have. In Jude 1 verse 20, we are exhorted to stir up our most holy faith. The oil uh, needed to be applied to the shield, just as our faith needs to be applied to our lives every single day. God will supply the ointment, but you must do the application. If your shield of faith was working correctly, then you would be able to have the power to quench, or in other words, to dampen, to limit, or to divert or extinguish uh, the fiery darts of the enemy. A good translation would be to divert, that is to, or to ricochet, that is to send it back, the fiery dart. And we pray in that way from time to time, uh, especially if we are dealing with word curses. We kind of curse them and we send them back to where they come from. So that is our shield of faith that that word curse bounces off of and goes back to where it comes. A fiery dart was made out of a long piece of cane and they were hollow. The opponent would fill the interior of the cane with a combustible fluid. Then they, and when they could not get into uh, the, the fortress or uh, the camp, uh, they would stand on the outside and shoot one of these or many of them uh, from a distance. And I don't know if you've ever seen a movie uh, where they depict uh, the um, opponent shooting arrows, there are thousands of them that come at, when the archers line up and they let those arrows go. Thousands come at you at one time. Um, and when it hit, it was like a, a flying bomb and it exploded. The symbolism here is that our shield of faith must be anointed. Otherwise, these fiery darts can hit us from a direction one would not normally expect it to come from and would create 
the most vile of passions, taking you by complete surprise. So I hope you get the understanding tonight. If you don't oil your shield of faith by the word, by prayer, uh, by listening to good uh, sermons, um, it will kind of dry up. And we all know that we've been through it. Uh, where you maybe don't pray for a day or two. You kind of become uh, the first thing that you, you feel. Uh, you don't feel dry, but you feel there's something missing. Okay, that's how it goes. You feel that there's something missing and you kind of get a little bit uncomfortable, uh, but then um, it kind of dries out and all you need to do is pick it up again. It comes back very quickly, fortunately. You know, if you miss a couple of days of prayer and you pick it up again by the second day, you're already starting to, to move in the right direction again. So don't ever be despondent if you miss a day or two of prayer. Just get back into it. So I hope you got some understanding tonight. Uh, we'll do the helmet of salvation next week. Uh, so uh, let's take communion tonight by faith that our physical bodies are healed in Jesus' name. Father, we come, we enter your presence once again tonight through the blood by faith. And we thank you that our Physical bodies are healed in Jesus' name. We say good evening, Lord. Good evening, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Spirit. And Father, we come. We repent of our sin of the day, sin of omission, sin of commission, sin of negative word, negative thought, and negative deed. And we thank you that it is removed as far as the east is from the west. We come. We bless the elements tonight. We bless the bread. We bless the blood. And we thank you, Father, that as we partake of the bread tonight, once again, by faith, we thank you that every sickness, every disease, every infirmity and every spirit of infirmity that's in our bodies is totally swallowed up by the bread tonight in Jesus name. The bread. The blood. Father, we come and we partake of the blood once again tonight with the understanding that it begins to open our spiritual eyes, that we begin to see, begin to hear, begin to know, that we have a greater measure of insight, foresight, revelation and inspiration, particularly to that which pertains to the secrets and the mysteries of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we come and we partake of the blood once again tonight with the understanding that it elicits help from above, that every situation that we find ourselves in tonight whether it be physically, emotionally, spiritually, even financially, that we would certainly elicit help from above and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we come, we partake of the blood once again tonight with the understanding that it wards off every sickness, every disease and every virus that's floating around in the atmosphere and we pray a hedge of protection over and around our bodies tonight in Jesus' name, the blood. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Um, we pray uh, for Chico Widows tonight. She's been dis diagnosed with uh, COVID. So Father, we come and we lift up Chico tonight. We bring her before your throne in the power of agreement. And we lift up the virus that's known as COVID that's attached itself to her body. We break its power right now in Jesus' name. We command it to lose so and we command it to go. And Father, we speak to every uh, part of a respiratory system and we declare healing from the north, south, east and west in her body tonight in Jesus' name. According to your word that she will recover. According to your word that you would raise her up. Father, we thank you that Healing would surely come tonight by the stripes of Jesus. She's totally healed in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I'm going to put up the session for Jezebel later in the week. And we're going to do two sessions. And I think it's going to be on uh, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, I think I have an invite on Thursday evening, 
so I, I'm going to miss Thursday in terms of a teach session. Uh, we'll get to communion, hopefully. Um, but we're going to cover um, cutting soul ties. But what I'm going to do in the first session, uh, I'm going to go through what you need to cut soul ties from. Okay, uh, we'll do a session. Uh, it won't be that long, but it will give you the understanding and it will give you a day to prepare uh, your situation. Like I needed uh, to cut soul ties with many people, many, many friends, uh, with Jezebel, uh, with uh, people that had come against me uh, in the process, people that had worked witchcraft against me. Um, the um, I had to cut soul ties with uh, my pastor. Uh, unfortunately, that was not a healthy situation. So I had to cut the soul ties. But what we need to do is we need to forgive first. And I'll go through the whole process. Um, and I've just had to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I've just had to um, cut some people out of my life uh, that I never thought I'd cut out of my life, but we cut them out. You know, when God speaks, we listen. We can't hover uh, in two opinions. When God speaks, we listen. When God says cut, we cut. We can't waver. Okay. And it will help you get to the point to evaluate your personal life and who you need to actually cut out. I'll go through the whole list and then you can prepare uh, your list. Uh, that would be people that have worked a work of Satan in and against and over your life in every form, shape and fashion, whether it be siblings, whether it be family, whether it be your mother, whether it be your father, your pastor, um, peers, uh, people that affected you in terms of the spirit of rejection when you were very young. That comes in. That spirit comes in when you're very young. And if you don't deal with it, it doesn't go away. So we'll go through the whole process. You'll be able to draw your list. I've, I'm going to draw my list. I can't share it with you on the air, but um, I've been through mine already, but I'm going to go through a, a second list just to make sure that I've covered everything. And then on the final night, the second evening, which is possibly, I said, I think uh, Friday night, we will go through the format. I will lead you in prayer and you can just rattle off Every person that you needed to forgive, you needed to renounce, you needed to forgive yourself for getting into those situations. And you need to cut the soul ties. We'll do it on Friday night. That's the plan so far. So bless you tonight. Have a peaceful night's sleep. In Jesus' name. Goodbye.